This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Some other news from Meltzer's uh, Wrestling Observer, which is available at WrestlingObserver.com, by the way. Uh, he would say Hogan in Australia claimed he's going to wrestle at next year's WrestleMania. They claimed he told Vince McMahon the day after this year's Mania at the Fairmont Hotel in San Jose that he was going to wrestle and claimed Vince shook his hand and said, I look forward to it. It's a combination of common sense and the sense of having a match that would work. And most importantly, if he can pass a physical next year is all hands on deck, so to speak. Hogan also claimed he turned down an opportunity to compete in the UFC when it started. We looked at it and it was very violent and the referees weren't stopping the matches and were letting guys get beat up when they should have been stopped. So we just didn't want to have any part of it, but it's become quite a phenomenon. I got to tell you, Arn, uh, wrestling fans online have had a lot of fun with, uh, Hulk Hogan's storytelling ability. I think dusty famously said, don't let the truth get in the way of a good story. And it feels like Hulk Hogan maybe has that down pat and I love him all the same. I am a wrestling fan because of Hulk Hogan. So before we continue, I just want to say that clearly, but how silly is this shit? The idea that Hogan considered competing in the UFC in like 93, 94, come on. He might have considered it long enough to fold a magazine open in the shitter while he was reading it and saw an article and went, hmm, wonder what that is. That's about as far as him considering <laughs> getting in a UFC cage was considered. It's just remarkable. I mean, this is something that pops up every now and again, especially in the last, I don't know, five or six years, you would hear fans clamor for one more match. And Hogan would tease he was going to do one more match. Of course, we know uh, he's had just a, a ton of physical ailments, uh, chronic back problems, to say the least, to the point that Eric Bischoff has said that, you know, he has a lot of trouble getting around. I mean, just standing can be a chore. And uh, he flies private. And I mean, he's a very private person in that regard with these injuries. But out front, he's often talking about one more match. Did you guys always, did you ever hear any sort of rumblings that, Hey, they're really going to try to do this. Or did everybody just sort of think, Oh, this is home Hogan just being a showman. No big deal. Well, I mean, he's smart enough to keep his not, you know, his name out there. Right. And there's not going to be a plethora of people that are going to go, okay, now I saw him walk in the mall or I saw him at the beach or I saw him wherever I saw he was at the gym or my friend knows his cousin or whatever. He's not able to have a match. You're not going to have a backwash of all that occurring. So uh, what I've learned about this internet, one of the one big takeaways that I have figured out over the years, and this would apply to them too, anybody can go on there and shoot their own angle. Right. Sometimes it's going to be refuted. Sometimes it's going to be ignored, but you can go and say anything. Now, are they going to be a plethora of reporters that try to get a hold of Vince McMahon and say, did that conversation happen? Was your response what we heard it was? That never happened. So you're pretty safe. And I think in a smart sense for a guy like Hulk Hogan, who wants to keep his name front and center because the second you have a headline like that, Hogan preparing for match at WrestleMania next year, that's all you got to do. I'm smart enough to know to type that in and it's going to blow up because people assume that all the proper channels have been addressed and all the conversations have been had and he's actually going to be healthy enough to have it. They don't realize it's just keeping your name out there, free advertising. That's exactly what he's doing. And he has, uh, he's been phenomenal at it, uh, around the same time, Hogan and Brutus wind up having a bit of a falling out, uh, and eventually, uh, they reconcile Has their relationship always been sort of hot and cold over the years, or is this really the first time you remember them sort of having a split? No, God, I always thought they were severely tight. And the story goes back to, I guess, Brutus. Brutus did Hogan a couple of solids when they were young and, you know, Hogan never forgot it. And he, he made sure that he was taken care of, you know, in WCW and, and, uh, different places throughout. But I, you know, I had always heard they were always tight before this one breakup and I was never sure. And I don't like just spreading rumors and it's none of my business to be honest with you, but I heard they had a falling out. Yeah. And I'm glad they're back together. I mean, it's just, uh, 
there's certain things that just uh, go together like peanut butter and jelly. And, and for old time fans, Hulk Hogan and Brutus the fucking Barber Beefcake are, are peanut butter and jelly. Uh, let's talk. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30 year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money, it's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.